Most people think time is like a river that flows swift and sure in one direction. But I have seen the face of time, and I can tell you, they are wrong. <laughs> Prince of Persia is an interesting series because uh, it, there's a lot of good games in it, but they're so far apart. So it's kind of an interesting series in that way. Started off as a 2D side-scrolling adventure, um, and it proceeded to become one of the most beautiful games um, ever created. But the game came out in '89, and, and it came out for the Apple II, and I remember it very well. A very small, tiny box pretending to be a computer. I mean, the animation was. Uh, just like nothing anyone had ever seen before. It was really uh, lifelike, even though the, the graphics were unrealistic, like the people didn't, weren't very detailed. It was just the way they moved. You could recognize them as people. They use a technique called rotoscoping, which is where you film something and then you draw over the film. And a lot of uh, old cartoons from the 40s use it too to make the animations of the characters seem really, really realistic, like they were really alive. See, this guy, Jordan Metzger, this was his game, and he put it together almost all by himself, and he became a gaming legend because of it. It was one of the first games to do that kind of animation, it was way ahead of its time. So the story of the first game was that the king was away at a war, and his advisor, the wazir, tried to assume the throne for himself. The prince, of course, hears about this, and has to fight his way through the castle to eventually confront the wazir. Now, if you think about it, that's not nearly as exotic and, and cool as you might think, because what is Persia? That's Iran! What are they up to? Building suspicious nuclear energy facilities and funding terrorist groups. But back in the ye olden days, it was Persia, and there were princes, and it was a good time. So in 93, a pretty forgettable sequel came out called The Shadow and the Flame. The whole, like, thrill of the new was gone, and there were other games that came after the first Prince of Persia that kind of did the same thing even better. A couple years later, though, when Tomb Raider was big, they said, hey, let's do a Tomb Raider version of this. They did Prince of Persia 3D, and that was, uh, you can get that on your PC, you could play that on the Sega Dreamcast. And it was kind of cool if you wanted a Tomb Raider knockoff with a guy instead of a hot chick. So after Prince of Persia 3D in 1999, nobody was really thinking about the prince and his adventures. But in 2003, Ubisoft put out a new revitalized Prince of Persia game called Prince of Persia, The Sands of Time. It takes the basic concept and just does it fresh from the ground up. It was fantastic. Everybody loved it. Every room is unique and they have character. They obviously studied um, the era and the architecture of the era. And it really comes through. Uh, not something you have to play video games to appreciate. They just really put a lot of work into the art. One of the really cool things about the first Prince of Persia game from Ubisoft was that it was really structured well in terms of the way it told its story, in terms of its narrative. Uh, the way they present the story in that game is interesting because there's a lot of times where things will be revealed as you're playing the game. And the prince will be having an inner dialogue while you're actually running around. There was a treasure I could carry with pride as a trophy of our victory. If I could only get there. And I thought that was a great choice. I'm surprised you still don't see that more. So it starts off, you're the prince again, and you go to India, and you defeat the Maharaji, and you steal not only his lovely daughter, but also his stands of time in the stands of time hourglass, and his dagger of time. If you lose one, you're okay. If you lose both, not good. The wazir tricks the prince into sticking the dagger into the stands of time, which unleashes this huge kind of cataclysmic effect across their entire land. Then the sands are released and everyone turns into a crazy sand demon. So the prince and the princess, they're the only guys left, and they have to fight all the sand demons. They got some good chemistry going, you know, they're really, they're really kind of vibing, getting along, you know, you don't know where this might lead. She was actually somebody who was captured in the country they just conquered, and they brought her back as one of the spoils of war, so, you know, he was gonna turn her into a slave girl, and now he's gotta uh, depend on her to watch his back. So it was a really cool tension there. I mean, it was a great game, it had a lot of atmosphere. You basically would start off each section of the game at one end of a room or an area, and you had to get to the other end and you have to avoid all kinds of traps along the way and you could run across walls you could somersault you could leap onto ropes and swing across them you're like the mitch gaylord of persia and it's just fantastic i mean the wall flip it's very uh, it's it's sort of wuxia kung fu movie kind of a vibe really fun i just like people running on walls who doesn't like to see somebody run up a wall that was one of the coolest moves i'd ever seen when you get to see do, 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 runs up the wall you're like Wow. It just looks good. It looks a lot better than most games. Like, he moves like an acrobat, uh, just like in the original one. I think that the, the spirit is really an effort to try to 
recapture the excitement that you saw in that first Prince of Persia game. You know, when you walk into the store and you're like, oh my God, that guy's moving like a guy. The game is really about interacting with the level. It's not really about the fighting. And the fighting that you have is kind of small and limited and repetitive. The one complaint a lot of people had about Prince of Persia is the combat, even though it's very stylish, uh, gets a little repetitive. The really fun part of the game is the jumping puzzles. It's like look around and be like, I can jump off of that and then bounce onto that and swing around that and slide down there and like run the course the exact way they want you to without messing it up. It, it's just, it's great. So I, I particularly like this game because you could reverse time. You know, you have the sands of time, you control time. So if you screwed up and fell in the spikes, whoop, now you're okay and you can try it again. Ubisoft had a big hit, obviously, sequel to follow. The sequel was called Prince of Persia, The Warrior Within. Prince of Persia, you know, cute game, nice vibe, everybody liked it and kind of teen rated. They said for the sequel, we gotta go a little more hardcore. Everyone's getting a little crazy with all this Grand Theft Auto stuff. We need a little more violence, more sex, more action. So they kind of took everything darker. They had kind of like an angsty rock soundtrack. I think Godsmack did a, a song for the game and it, it wasn't really the same kind of energy as the first game. I mean, the great part about the first game was uh, the acrobatics and the jumping puzzles and the bad part was the combat. And in The Warrior Within, they just emphasized the combat over the jumping puzzles which was what everyone loved about the first game. So another thing about uh, Warrior Within that fans kind of were carping about was there was a lot stronger sexual overtones, mature overtones in the second game. It's just ridiculous. People, uh, uh, nations of the world, please stop making video games that are supposed to be sexy. These 3D women with the, with the, the, the boobs aren't real. You can't touch them. It's no good. The prince starts off the game, he's on the run. There's this mystical beast chasing him because he messed with the sands of time in the first game. And now the Tahaka, this big black thing with teeth and claws, is not gonna leave him alone until it kills him because he messed with time. I couldn't stand getting chased by the Dahaka because he he doesn't like me messing around with the sands of time. That's, that's his own problem. I had sands of time, I'm gonna use him. Chase me around, forget about it. So our cracked out prince says, hey, I got a great idea. I'm gonna go back in time again, because that's how I got in all this trouble in the first place, and kill the Empress of Time, who created the Sands of Time. It's like some crazy Stephen Hawking black hole stuff going on there, and your future is now your own past, and in the present, you're in your own future's past. And if you're confused, that's one of the other things that fans complain about the game. The storyline had so much back and forth travel in the time stream that you really kind of forgot what period of time you were in, and what you're supposed to be doing. You just were beating up guys, eventually hoping it would all work out. So Ubisoft goes back to the well again in 2005, and they come out with Prince of Persia, The Two Thrones. Why are there two of them? Because you're you, and you're also you. You have your dark side, the dark prince, who you can turn into in times of trouble. The dark prince is, uh, is kind of evil. He's got this crazy spiky chain on his arm, and he just whips it out. The cool thing about Two Thrones is that it seems like the game designers really listened to some of the criticisms from fans and press alike. The third one brought all the plot threads that no one understood to a close. At this point, they've got the formula, they know what works, and uh, it's just another great game. The music uh, left behind that kind of angsty Godsmack rock and went back to kind of more movie production style music. Um, they eliminated some of the combat by introducing the option for stealth kills. Um, and if you could do that, you could often avoid long and repetitive combat sequences. Now you crouch down, get into that stealth mode, you get the little kind of cat's eye, I'm sneaking up on your view, and then whoosh, right across the neck, little Columbia necktie. So one of the reasons Prince of Persia is a really great game franchise is because they listen to the fans, they listen to the press, and kind of reinvigorated the franchise so they went out with a really strong finish. I mean, the series has been so successful, uh, even though they completed the trilogy for you know those, the Xbox, PlayStation 2 uh, generation of consoles. It's been so successful that, of course, they're gonna continue it. Uh, and now they're talking about putting it on the way. You know, thus proving that Prince of Persia will indeed never die. If you love puzzles, jumping, action combat, or just a lot of sand in your shorts, you're gonna love Prince of Persia.